So Mike from Sim Racing 604 lent me his F309 the other day, and I promised not to scratch it. At Velocita, what do you think is going to happen? Welcome back to the 27. Several weeks ago on the Boltcast, Mike said one of his favorite cars in AMS2 was the F309. One of two F3 category open wheelers featured in AMS2. We're going to be taking a look at the F309 in some detail. Like most aero cars and formula cars in particular, aero can be quite interesting. We're trying to put together a package that is versatile and easily adaptable moving forward for you. Many of you may be familiar with F3 as a feeder series on the road to F1. Brazil featured their own version of F3, unaffiliated with the FIA, most recently for about four years from 2014 to 2017, featuring two vehicles both designed by Dallara, the F301 in the Class B category and the F309 in the Class A category. They are designed to be simple, cost-effective, and spec. Dallara, as you know, is a chassis manufacturer that specializes in spec series aero designs, IndyCar, F3, F2, and they even helped develop an F1 car for the low-budget Haas team. The F309 you see here is powered by a Ford 2.3-liter inline four-cylinder developed by Oreste Berta. It has the distinct characteristic of what looks like some type of plasma cannon on the side, so if you can't pass your foes, you can coat them with some sparkly goo. Unfortunately, this feature is not yet included or bindable to your wheel. This might be a bit too simcade for some, so let's just call it an air intake for now. With under 300 horsepower, the F309 will not blow you away, but it may not need to. It's very light, and it will get you in touch with the fundamentals of driving aero-based formula cars, and in particular, the tuning of them as an aero platform. They will also not blow you away with grip. You'll actually come away relatively surprised with the amount of sliding you'll be doing, depending on traffic, the track, its textures, its conditions. Mid-corner adjustments are common, a feathered throttle foot is required, all with the underlying concern of how the arrow is affecting the car, so you can confidently start to apply more power. If you're out of shape when you apply too much, the car will spin on you, as the arrow of the car doesn't react well the more sideways you get, so keeping it in a straight line is vital. Setup wise, it was pretty straightforward. I optimized the damping package and made some adjustments to pressure and camper. What was interesting about the F309 was finding the balance between mechanical grip and aero. Aero can frequently cover up mechanical grip flaws with cars, but with the F309 there wasn't enough to completely overshadow it. With aero comes drag and reduced top speed, so finding solutions on the mechanical grip side of things and optimizing ride height I was able to reduce the rear wing and actually increase downforce at some vital moments. The car should be well set up for easy aero balance adjustments on a per track basis for you. So let's take a look at what we did. Hello to Racing Sim Tools and once again I registered a three lap hottish hottish lap session with the defaults and a three hottish lap session with the custom. Happy to see that I gained over a second with the custom and you may be thinking oh well where do you get that that time a whole second over just a few clicks here and there. It's all about comfort. Comfort. Setups are about comfort guys being able to push the envelope of the car making the car feel more stable and secure in your hands at respond responding well to your inputs without having to second guess or throttle chop or wheel hack and all that stuff slows you down and setups can calm that down too so you can start finding that edge of grip that's all it's about so let's look at the arrow and try to find where I got that extra downforce where I could reduce the rear wing and still get you know arguably more downforce if you look at the blue um, compared to the yellow or some could say that's more downforce um, but in any event let's see where the crucial aspects of the downforce come into play and I wanted to um, take a look at the first chicane at Emla here and I found it by having a more stable rear package you know a stiffer rear suspension where the engine is but also optimizing the ride height a little bit better so what I did was I reduced the ride height overall and it turns out that the car responded well to that so I got a probably about 
you know, maybe 10 to 20% more downforce in this ex in mid corner here. Um, and the, and the rake was a little bit, um, a little bit less, less, um, um, less rake, more downforce. Simple enough. Doesn't always happen like that, but that's what you do when you're testing. Let's move on to the damper speeds. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So that's a lot. Let's, let's, uh, try to, wow. Okay. So that's way too much. Let's try to focus in on here in here, what we're looking at. So let's look at the default package. Okay. So the top two graphs are the suspension travel. Um, so the front travel and the rear travel. Um, obviously, this is the speed. And then at the bottom here is damper speeds or the velocity of the dampers. So this is the, the basically this whole suspension travel. And this is the speeds down here. So um, the default package has a lot uh, less travel than the custom package, uh, the, the purple and white. So blue and red is default purple and white is the or pink and white I should say is the custom so you're saying oh wow your suspension has a lot more travel to it steel what's going on that's not good um, actually it's not that bad because the suspension is absorbing the track bumps undulations and um, and handling you know the car mechanics um, in a softer more gradual way okay so that's this is all based on feel but I'll tell you why this is important so even though I am getting more suspension travel um, the car is not heaving as much so if you look at the third graph here we're on the modal analysis page um, compared to the custom uh, the default is heaving about a centimeter more um, pretty much all areas and that is you know it's not much it's a centimeter but that means the car chassis is moving. So the car chassis moving up and down isn't necessarily a good thing with aero cars. You want a stable platform. Um, that's optimal. Let's go back to the damper speeds for a second. Let's try to find a good straightaway where we can start to boil down where damper speeds come into play here. And that would be, let's, yeah, let's just pick a right at, uh, whoop. See Daisy. <laughs> Let's pick a nice spot here and try to zoom in so you can see what we're talking about here. Now, there's a lot of lines. I'm going to cut it down a little bit, but um, we're focusing in on the yellow and green um, going up and down here, and that is the rear suspension where the engine is, where the weight of the car, most of the weight of the car is. And you can see with the custom, the custom, uh, I'm sorry, the default package. Let's focus in on the yellow. I think it's easier to see. The yellow is the right rear. Um, so you can see it's peaking at a damper speed of, you know, 150 millimeters per second. And down here, it's valleying at 150 millimeters per second. Now let's cross-reference that with the custom package. And the, the right rear is peaking at 100, and it's valleying, valleying near 100 as well. So this, the damper speeds were a lot more reduced. That means the the tires are more on the road actually so that's called critical damping that's what, what you're looking for here um, and it was reflected well in the um, the damper histograms um, these numbers at the bottom here this is all these are damper speeds so um, these things can you can cross reference things in RST to double double check see actually what's going on in a little bit more detail but finally let's 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 wrap this up with the run tab um, looking at the total let's look at the camber pressure first i think that's pretty informative so the pressure on the default package was it's well over pressured um uh, and it doesn't need to be this high so i fix i clean that up with the the custom package and you can see boom a lot better a lot more optimized and then also the custom package had some pretty strong cambering going on especially on the left side of the car at emila uh, that's not uncommon you're going to have offset cambering sometimes because you know the left you're going to be turning left more often than you're turning right or turning right more often than you're turning left so having um offset cambering is a thing you don't have to have a symmetrical build everywhere you go so um i've but these are symmetrical builds, so what you're trying to do is trying to find the best range, and that's basically what I did. So I found a good comfortable range of cambering for the fronts and the rears. I kept the rears a little bit flatter. I think um, Formula type cars like flatter rears, um, and you know, like I said, the pressure's there. But let's take a look at the wear as well. Um, these are racing slicks. They're pretty durable, so it's not really that big of a deal. But you can see that I got about uh, you know four and a half, four to four and a half percent of wear from all the tires, 
and when you're looking at things like where I, I like to use wear a lot because uh, judging wear because if you're getting equal wear on all of your tires depending on the track obviously there's going to be outlying tracks but if you're getting equal wear that means you're using the maximum amount of rubber that you can um, and if you're getting uneven wear that means one tire is getting overworked or two tires are getting overworked you're going to be pitting sooner um, and more often than the other competition so let's take a look at the the default package and yeah, I mean, it's twice as much wear almost and not negligible, if not any more grip, actually a loss of grip. So you're losing, um, uh, you have equal grip, um, more wear, uh, more wing. So it's like we clean this up just a little bit and it added 1.2 seconds. So that's the F309. Before I let you go, one quick note about the AI. It's one of those topics that is kind of an eye of the beholder sort of thing. I drive relatively hectic sort of quick sprints, so I have a somewhat unique perspective as I never seem to be just pacing and lapping. There's always something going on, but I must say, as frustrating as it can be as they continue to dive bomb off track, change racing lines in the braking zones, etc., you name it. Giving them the respect as you would a real player, blocking a little bit more aggressively, limiting mistakes, and giving them the opportunity to swamp you, I'm as equally thrilled when I put together a fantastic race. I have 30 sprint races up with hardly any contact and a lot of side-by-side -side racing, and in this one virtually an entire lap as you're watching it right now. Although these videos aren't necessarily AI quote-unquote reviews, yawn, there's a growing body of positive evidence here. Coming up, the M1 Pro car will finally be ready and on the horizon we'll have a McLaren 720S build as if it needs to go any faster. In the meantime, thanks for watching and take care.